right, so as you can see, I took this cutout of Mr. Beast and ran it through the new Mid Journey Describe feature, and this is what it popped out at me. So you can see it gave me these four thumbnail examples or photo examples. So this is the new Describe feature from Mid Journey. We're going to talk about some use cases behind it and what I feel is the real benefit here. And actually, let's start out with that right there. I feel the real benefit here is not being able to get variations of an image like that you can see right here I also generated a bunch of variations we're gonna go through all of that but it tells you how mid journey thinks that's right the describe feature is less about getting variations of an image than it is better understanding mid journey because the better we can talk to this machine learning program the better we can utilize its features so you already know the slash imagine slash imagine will have you generate a prompt now this is the slash describe you'll notice there's something different when I enter slash described it no longer asks me for a prompt it asks me for an image and that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna open this up right here and we're gonna take this girl right here and we're gonna go ahead and hit enter now to save some time because it takes about a minute between the generations here I went ahead and did that right up here same photo and you can see that it gives us four different prompts this is what mid journey thinks of this photograph it is absolutely mind-blowing so not only can we talk to it it can now talk to us so we have an insight into how to better communicate now from here you're gonna notice much like when you're making images with mid journey you're gonna get four options on the bottom well I guess with mid journey you have nine you have upscaling variations and then the redo or the little recycle icon now if you click one of these it is then gonna go in and take that prompt so we selected number two number two was a girl in an Asian city walking on streets at night with dark lighting in the style of sci-fi art epic portraiture dark cyan and gray larme k rtx on hdr and then i cannot pronounce that but portraitures i can try i can butcher it uh charoscuro portraitures maybe but we click number two and number two gave us this right here it gave us these four generations that's right if you just type slash describe hit enter and then upload any image it can make variations for it and it can also tell you what prompts could be used to generate that image so not only is it a tool to make those variations but like I used it up here you can also take other image and just have it create something entirely new. You can see that I was doing this up here. This is just a product that I grabbed. I was attempting to find better product packaging. You can see it took this insert piece here and said, well, maybe you can have a miniature suitcase's product packaging. Um, this is a thumbnail example. So it just goes on and on and on. But then we start to change things. And by the way, this character initially was generated from this prompt right here. A Japanese girl in black and blue style, dystopian cityscape, antebellum gothic, rich layers. Of course, we're on version 5, and the style is 750. We're going to talk about that style in just a second, because that allows you to wildly change things. Okay, Wildly change things with this little S prompt right here. Let's go back to my test channel and scroll down and we'll talk about that now you'll notice that these images here and these are a bit different and why is that well I did something a little bit off I should have changed the style here instead I added a whole new style prompt but you can see that the stylization this slash slash or dash dash s and then between zero and a thousand is going to give you a different weight on your images and what exactly is that weight well it is how stylized or how close you want it to follow actually that would be chaos so there's two prompts we're going to talk about the first is back back s or dash dash s this can be anywhere between zero and 1000 and this is how stylized do you want mid journey to be style 1000 is going to be the most stylized possible if we open this image with s 1000 we can see the clarity here 
in the sharpness is very much so on point. Whereas then if we go back to here, we can see it is a little bit duller. It's a little bit less in focus. It's not as stylized. So with the describe feature, you need to have these little extras or this little bit of extra knowledge, which you can use in the imagine prompt as well. Okay, so that is stylization. Now the next one we have is back back C or dash dash C. I don't know why I say back back, but I do. And I usually like to leave this anywhere between a zero and let's say a 15 or uh, a 20. Now this is gonna be the chaos factor or the chaos prompt. This is how close do you want Mid Journey's AI or the Mid Journey bot to actually follow your prompt. Let's just say this is giving Mid Journey a little bit of stylized freedom. So let's go ahead and go back and generate number two. Now it's going to give you this, don't worry about that warning there, it's just a friendly reminder not to share passwords or any other info with anyone. Um, and let's go ahead and go down to the bottom here. So the stylization, we're going to change that to 1000. We want this to be as styled as possible in mid journey. But we're going to add something else, we're going to go dash dash C and we're going to say 10. We're going to give it a little bit of creative freedom here and then click submit and see what it generates. Now there's a lot of different uses for this and I've been having a ton of fun playing around with it. But uh, as you can see, uh, this right here is probably going to get used for something. And it looks like something. I mean, these. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the bottom right, but the top two and the bottom left I am a big fan of. Let's see if we killed enough time. We can see it is starting to generate here. We can already see that this one is facing directly towards the camera. These are a bit closer view. You can see that while it has the same prompt, we gave it the same uh, describe prompt, it's variating quite a bit. So we can see here, what is that? Is that 100%? 93%. So we are almost there. And I'm very excited if any of you want to share your mid journey portfolios, um, let me know. I would love to take a look at them. Um, but you can see here, that it did not follow it as closely. You can see this top right looks a bit more photorealistic. The bottom right looks a little bit hyper saturated. The bottom left has added this orange hue. So this orange hue to it or the glow would be outside of our parameters of what colors did we give it? Uh, dark lighting. And then originally we had uh, yeah dark cyan and gray. So there was no orange in here. You can see it gave us the three and then different and of course from here we can go and make variations of any of them and then we can actually go and restart the whole process if there's something we like we can also go online to say stock images grab a stock image and make it look really cool make it animated change the style of it the uh, is this is limitless I'm, I'm at a loss for words of what we can do with this. And I'm really, really excited about the fact that we get a better look at what Midjourney's thinking. How does it communicate with itself? Because when you talk to it, it's gonna transfer that into something it can understand. And this is what it is. So let's take a look at uh, the characters here. This is our original image. And after running it through the describe, uh, we have ended up with these four options here, which is completely different off of the same image. One other thing is I took a thumbnail for a video that I did on a separate channel, more of a documentary channel. I took this image right here and I wanted a futuristic spin on it and it spit out this, which on the bottom right I may actually use. You can see they follow somewhat the same without being the same. Anyways, without rambling, that was the new described feature, how to use it, and some interesting little tips along the way. If you found it educational, possibly entertaining, I put out a ton of content every single week, and I'll never ask you to sign up for a course, ever, ever. I've been doing YouTube for about five years, will never ask you to sign up for a course. All of this is free, including this video on your screen now. Also, like the video, helps the algorithm, helps my motivation to be completely honest, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing.